Welcome everyone to the session. We have Ayan Khan with us, who's going to be talking about building an Appium driver to automate custom built hardware. Enjoy the session and over to you, Ayan. Hey everybody. Um, thank you to everybody who's watching this and uh, thank you to everybody who's going to be watching this. Um, I hope you guys have a good time and um, yeah, I hope everything turns out well and I hope you guys are doing well, especially with everything going on. Uh, in today's world. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, building an Appian 2.0 driver to automate uh, custom built hardware. So let's get right into it. So just a quick uh, about me. Um, I'm a third year computer engineering student at uh, the University of Waterloo. Um, I just started my second semester of third year actually last week. So um, kind of excited and also stressed. And um, over the past summer, I worked at Headspin.io as a software engineering intern. And uh, during this internship, I got to work with uh, Jonathan Lips, who is uh, the project lead for Appium. And as a part of the internship, I got to work on primarily Appium related tasks. Um, and I also did some um, contributions to the Appium Open Source Project. Now, just a little bit about this talk. Um, so uh, with this talk, what I really wanna do is kind of present um, a real life scenario uh, that me and the team at Headspin dealt with and how we use, uh, how we developed a custom Appium 2.0 driver to meet um, a project requirement. And the goal of that talk is, or I guess the goal of this talk is kind of to give like a presentation of a use case of Appium 2.0 and just kind of an example to highlight slash showcase what Appium 2.0 can really do, what it's capable of all, and maybe some sort of inspiration for how you can use it for some of your own personal projects or tasks. So um, just to lay a bit of a background for um, why, I, why we ended up using Appium 2.0 for the project that we worked on, I want to kind of give a quick intro in to Appium 2.0 from my perspective. And from, from my perspective, um, essentially the goal of Appium 2.0 is to transition from being a server which bundles many drivers to one which by default doesn't build any drivers at all. And the idea is that Appium 2.0 is uh, that moving forward what Appium is really trying to do is be an interface for uh, retrieving and using drivers. And the other side of that is it wants to give the community uh, the ability, or I guess make it, make it easier for the community to create uh, custom drivers for different piece of hardware, hardware and really grow the list of devices that can be automated using um, Appium and Selenium syntax. And so what's kind of the effect of, or the byproduct of this goal is that it becomes really easy and simple to write new custom drivers and plugins. And because of that, it becomes more feasible to add um, automation capabilities to different, um, to different types of devices, such as a PlayStation, uh, a smart TV remote, or an Apple Watch, and et cetera, et cetera, or something that even you might build and are thinking of providing automation capabilities on top of. So now I just wanna talk about the project a little bit. Um, so during my time at Headspin, um, we had a project come up that revolved um, around adding automation capabilities to a smart TV remote. And the automation capabilities included uh, the ability to remotely trigger physical button presses on a remote, uh, the ability to perform uh, complex physical button press sequences on the remote, and the ability to 
simultaneously press two physical buttons on a remote. And the idea for adding these automation capabilities is that um, usually to test that smart TV remote, um, a, the, the QA team would have to manually press buttons and they would have to um, manually uh, test different combinations and sequences themselves. But um, with, with this project, the idea was that uh, you, can, you can set up um, hardware on top of the remote so that remotely you can have many QA um, or many uh, testers uh, remotely testing uh, the remote. But all, all, the, all the actions were actually happening physically. So it wasn't primarily software. There was actually something that was pr uh, pressing on the buttons and triggering responses so that you can actually get a live feedback of what happens when you try different stuff on the remote. And so um, for the project, why did we choose Appian 2.0? Um, the reason we choose to develop a Appian 2.0 driver to meet those automation capability requirements was because we realized that the simplest way to add automation capabilities to any sort of driver or sorry, any piece of hardware was to create an Appian 2.0 driver for it because we could then leverage Appian's pre-built automation capabilities rather than uh, building everything from the ground up. And also um, with an Appian 2.0 driver sitting in the middle between uh, the, the, the hardware control system and um, the client side, it made it easier for, to write client side code since it only has, and, and it made it easier to write client side automation code since it only had to really interact with the Appian 2.0 driver and not some of the detailed um, control system code that was implemented. So now I just want to give a quick um, uh, a demo of the project and what we were able to build. So this is a Headspin um, platform for uh, testing. Uh, on the right side of the screen, what you have is a graphical user interface and with the graphical user interface, you can um, remotely control the remote and press buttons on it and perform um, sequences. And then on the left hand of the side of the screen, uh, what you see is a camera pointing to a TV and the TV is there to gauge the output of the, but of the input that you drive through the user interface on the right. So I'm just gonna play the video a bit. So initially when you start up, or I guess when you, when you open up the user interface, uh, you just have some setup info for connecting to a remote. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So once you enter the information to connect to a specific uh, remote or device, it's going to open up the remote uh, layout. Now, right now, this is the remote layout, and it's um, it's it's showing all the possible um, keys on the remote physically. And right now, there's two different modes. Currently, we're in the simple mode, and during the sim while you're in simple mode, um, what happens is that you basically um, so in simple mode every button press or any time you press a key it sends a command to the hardware so it sends uh, it sends a command to the hardware to basically press um, for a default duration on the hardware and so the hardware will then um, uh, press the button of the remote for that default duration of the time so I'm just going to run through some sequences. So here I'm pressing the down button, pressing the right button. And then as you can see, um, the screen on the left is changing.
But yeah, as you can see, um, while it's in simple mode, you can um, use uh, the remote as you would physically, and it just acts like like it would physically. Um, and then uh, the other mode you have is the advanced mode. And in the advanced mode is where you can queue up a sequence of events you want to happen all at once. So instead of having to manually navigate your way uh, through the th through the remote, you can just set up a sequence of actions you want to happen and then perform them. So here uh, I'm I'm creating up a sequence, um, and this involves uh, pressing the YouTube button for 400 milliseconds, creating a pause for three, uh, three seconds, because once you press uh, the YouTube button, it takes some time for it to load up. Then I'm pressing the down button. The down button, down button, the right button. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, so here I just have created a sequence where I, where I'm basically telling, um, so where I, so the sequence that I've created uh, is that I press the YouTube button for 400 milliseconds, then I press a pause, I press the down button, and then I pause for 300 milliseconds, uh, I press the down button again, press pause uh, for three um, 300 milliseconds, and I press the right button, then I press pause for 300 milliseconds, and then I press the select button. And the reason for those pauses are, I'm pretty sure everybody's accustomed to some of some of um, some automation on mobile, but it's usually to wait for a response to happen before you trigger a command so that your command doesn't get lost. And now I'm going to perform this. You got five minutes to go, Ian. So as you can see, this is something that you can pretty much do. Um, this is something that you can pretty much do using uh, client scripts too. Now I'm just gonna give a quick overview of the development stack for how we made this happen. So at the very bottom level is where you have the physical hardware. Um, and um, the physical hardware is so on top of the remote, on top of a physical remote, there exists um, a piece of hardware. It's kind of like a button presser or a robot. Uh, you send it commands uh, and with the du duration and it will physically press that button on that remote for that, for that duration. And then uh, the hardware exposes a Python library and the Python library is used to interact with the hardware using Python and send commands to it. And so on top of the Python library, uh, there's a uh, there's a web service written in Python Tornado, and it maps the functionality of the hardware um, to HTTP routes, and it's responsible for performing commands on the hardware based on requests to those um, routes. Um, and then on top of the web service is, a, is the Appium 2.0 driver. And other than uh, the prepackaged Appium capabilities that come with um, uh, the Appium 2.0 driver and all of the packages, uh, there's a custom send button com uh, or button press command. And the button press command uh, leverages the Selenium uh, actions JSON protocol to uh, parse in a set of actions coming from the client side into ticks, which are then sent to the web service to perform um, almost um, concurrently. And then on top of the web, on top of the driver is where you will have your uh, user interfaces or your um, Appium, um, Appium scripts, uh, QA scripts, which you can uh, perform actions against. 
And so, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I wanted to um, showcase or demo for today. Um, I see that we're kind of almost running out of time. Three more minutes left, so we got time for some questions. Yeah, let's do some questions. So the first one we've got here is: What are some possibilities that may be considered for automating anything on television? What are some possibilities that may be considered for automating anything on television? Yeah, just about I would like using, uh, uh, Well, I, I guess similar. I guess for. Um, so I guess maybe that kind of ties into the remote. So I guess uh, what you want to see is uh, how how does the television react to your different um, combination sequences or your button press sequences that you make on the remote. Mm -hmm. And okay, cool. So um, it's kind of like a very open question, but I guess yeah, yeah. Uh, if, yeah this is very, if, if a person asks that question, wants to add some more detail at the bottom, we can. Yeah. Do you want to just finish your screen share, and then we can see you um, full screen? Sure. Um, next question was how is how hardware is clicking the physical buttons? Are we using some robot? Yes, yes, we're using um, a physical um, button presser type uh, robot, uh, and would it basically. Um, when you send a command to it, it has a, it's kind of like, I guess you can think of it like a pencil. It's, it's a pencil that's connected to, it's kind of like a, a pencil that's connected to each uh, button. And when you send a command, the, pe the pencil or the pointer goes down and it physically makes uh, a press on the button for a certain duration. So it holds down on the button for a certain duration. Right. And cool. uh, where can we download these uh, drivers? Um, currently, these, these drivers are uh, closed source, but yeah, may, I, I don't doubt that maybe there's some other um, similar types of drivers for different remotes. I think I know that Jonathan was trying to do something with Roku and he has some uh, open source projects related to uh, um, button press, uh, sorry, um, automation on remote. So uh, maybe in the future, that turns out to be more uh, drivers similar to these, but this one specifically is uh, closed source. Why didn't you guys use an infrared transmitter to kind of emulate the remote? Wouldn't it have been easier? An infrared transmitter. I'm sorry if I, I don't look. I think it is in programming, programming the signals over an infrared thing rather than the physical button pushes. Oh, because we're trying to simulate as much uh, of the real world experience, or I guess the real button press itself, because you're actually testing the remote itself, if that kind of makes sense. Because um, uh, when when QA got, when, when people uh, in QA would test the remote, they would have to manually press buttons to make sure it's working properly, it's responding properly to certain uh, button press lengths and it's, um, uh, basically, it's for testing if the remote itself is working properly, and uh, the remote works on based off of um, actual physical presses. All right. One last question, and then we'll have to go to the to the booths, hangouts. What which exact library are you using for the web services? Uh, Python Tornado. There you go. Well, that was a quick one. Right, we'll be call it quits there. Um, Ayan, thank you so much for today's demo. It's been interesting uh, insight into using Appium with some hardware. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming. Take care.